Hello guys and welcome to this video. Now today I'll be making the ultimate Seiko 5 Dress KX Datejust mod. So here is our start point. Now I know there's been a few comments over the last year. People want me to mod one of these references. Now this is the reference SRPE 63K1 and I've been meaning to do this for a long long time and finally I'm able to thanks to Namoki Mods um, they haven't sponsored this video in any way but thank you for finally getting these parts out there because these parts are going to help us turn this watch into this watch now look at that guys what a transformation this is the Dress KX Datejust style mod and uh, I've added the sapphire crystal, the fluted bezel, the brush chapter ring, and this gorgeous Jubilee bracelet from Namoki Mods. Of course, all parts are linked in the description if you're interested in having a go yourself. And this, I believe, is the first sort of modern, proper date just style mod. Um, you may have seen mods uh, in the date just style before, but usually the proportions are all wrong. And I think this one almost nails it. Um, it's really, really good. And for a modern watch, which is available, I know there's some older Seiko references with fluted bezels, which are very hard to come by now. This just works. So I'm very happy to have finally been able to do it. And uh, I'm really keen to show you the process in case you wanted to make one yourself as well. So keep watching guys and you'll see how I built this. It's not that difficult. So let's get started guys. Um, can't wait to try this first time I'm doing it. I decided to record pretty much the whole process here um, because I believe this would actually be quite a straightforward mod for perhaps a first time modder to have a go at as well. So first things first, uh, let's get this strap off. Um, I can't wait to try that bracelet. I know you guys will have already seen it in the video, the outcome, but um, let's see how this, how easy or hard this actually is. Um, now, before I actually get into the uh, mods, let's have a quick look around this watch. Now, it did come on Seiko standard um, NATO strap here, which are pretty decent. They're not super comfortable, but they do wear pretty well, as in they, they, um, they are quite wear resistant. They're quite tough. They don't fray on the edges. Um, and this being the I guess K1 model would come on this strap. I believe there is another reference that does come on a bracelet as well. The bracelet won't be as good as this though. So let's have a look. Now, just looking around the watch in its standard form, you've got the crown at four. This is 40, I believe it's 40 or 41. I'll have to check, I'll put it as a link here, but um, it's about 40 millimeters diameter and it does appear a little thinner than your your typical 5KX. Um, now I'm referring to this as the Dress KX as well, and that's that's the sort of nickname it's got online uh, because it is kind of like the dress version of the Seiko 5 Sport dive watches, which are my sort of bread and butter. I've, I've had a lot of those mods um, over the years, and you can see many more on my channel. And if you're new here, by the way, please subscribe. Please also follow me on Seiko Mods Dubai on Instagram. That's where you'll see all my latest mods and you can contact me for build requests and so on. So anyway, back to this one. It has a lovely sunburst blue dial. I believe this is the same blue dial they use on the SRPD 51, I believe, and 53 uh, dive watches. Now the dials on these and the hands are actually different. Some people think they are the same, they are not. The hands are definitely thinner, especially you can see that on the minute hand definitely thinner than the dive style kind of variant. Um, the markers are also noticeably thinner. Um, now, so watch out sometimes, you know, uh, models would use these dials in those dive watches and there's something that doesn't look quite right. It might be that the dial is actually from one of these. Inside the movement is the same, the 4 hour 36, the day date, and uh, that, yeah, so those, those are the key differences. It, of course, it has a chapter ring, it has a smooth um, kind of pilot style or, or or just a conical style bezel, more like a field watch, I would call it, or an explorer style. Uh, nice polished lugs, plain crown. I prefer a plain crown sometimes. Let's get this sticker off. 
there we go. So underneath you have uh, what seems like a larger area, but I think it's just because the watch is a bit smaller. Um, so yeah, nice Seiko exhibition case back. This is 10 bar, so 100 meter water resistance remains with this case back as well. And yeah, really nice, simple, handsome watch. Um, don't think that NATO does it much favors. So I'm actually curious to see how, how it looks on here, but I'm more curious to see how it looks with that fluted bezel. So the reason I have not yet done one of these is simply because um, I've, there are some other parts uh, available out there to make a watch like this, a date just style. However, um, there's a few key problems with them. Usually the bezels are not really the right size. Um, so for example, you can get a fluted bezel even for an SKX 007, but that looks like this. You can also get a cheap Bleager case or something like that from AliExpress, and I have tried one of those, and the proportions are okay. They're definitely better, but the quality of the bracelets, the parts, and here's one, are uh, not so good, especially the crowns. That's where it really shows. Um, and also with my mods, I quite like to keep a bit of Seiko in there. So I do like to have the crown at four still in most of my builds. And of course I want the Seiko original dial and some other original parts. So for this one, I'm actually keeping the dial, the hands, the movement, all of that the same. The only things I'm changing are, of course, the fluted bezel, which is in here. The crystal is gonna be a clear AR because I don't want to impede on that lovely sunburst finish of the dial. So that's gonna be a clear double domed crystal, of course. We're gonna add a brushed chapter ring because I think this really adds a bit of uh, that Rolex look to most of the watch builds, especially the Rolex style ones. And also this chapter ring is okay. Of course, it's more useful with the minute markers, but it doesn't really, uh, firstly, I don't think it's even aligned. It isn't, is it? Not really well aligned. And also it's, uh, yeah, it's a bit, it's a plastic chapter ring. It doesn't really look all that, um, all, all that dressy. So I think this is gonna dress it up a bit. And then finally, of course, the solid Jubilee bracelet made for this watch uh, by Nemoki Mods as well. So let's get cracking. Let me get my gloves on and we'll open this one up. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is remove the dial uh, hands and movement, all of that, all the guts out of the watch. To do that, you're gonna need to remove the case back. Um, I haven't tried this yet, so we'll see how tight it is. These don't tend to be too tight. I use a dead simple, cheap tool for the job. I'm just used to using this. I'm sure there are better tools out there, but you can get this easily in any simple watch making, watch making set. I would imagine it's probably the same size it is as the regular 5KX, which is this is usually set to anyway. So I've just loosened it there. So we're gonna unscrew that. And I will try and show you most of the steps in case you wanted to try this on your own. Um, not too many parts here, so it shouldn't be too difficult. Now, let's zoom in as touch. So to get the crown out, this is not a push, uh, it's not, sorry, it's not a screw down crown. So what I like to use, and if you've modded watches before, you'll definitely have a few of these lying around. These are wonderful things for getting crowns out. These are the spare crowns you get with a movement, the kind of standard uh, a test crown sort of thing on the stem there. And we're gonna go and press it onto here. Okay, now the reason I like this little tool is because I can actually do it with one hand whilst pulling on the crown with the other. So I'm just pushing that down and pulling it out. So there's the crown gone. We'll move, move that little tool to one side. So there is the standard crown. That's really the only thing that's locking it in there. Okay, next I'm gonna drop the movement out. So to do that, I'm actually gonna get my little pad ready. So this is just a watch cushion, casing cushion, I should say. You can use almost anything for that. Um, and what I like to do, sometimes they drop out pretty easy, um, but I will shimmy it along a little bit by just gently lifting the movement under, under this bridge here and dropping it out like so. Okay, now at this point, you really don't want to touch the top of the movement, touch the hands, sorry, let's zoom out again. 
touch the top of the movement, uh, sorry, the dial, don't touch the hands, of course, you may well scratch it. And this is the, really the star of the show for this watch, this beautiful, look at that. I really love looking at dial, naked dials, as I call them. Um, so I'm gonna put this guy away. I'm not modifying this in any way. I'm just modifying the case, essentially. So that's gonna go on its cushion and I'm gonna put it under a glass over, over on the right. Now we've got the dial of movement out. We are gonna to attempt to remove this bezel now it is, um, from what I understand, the bezel itself is holding the crystal in. So there's a couple of ways we can do this and notice the chapter ring is in there as well. So I'm thinking, do I try the press first or do I just try and lift it? But I think I might actually just try the press um, because I don't really need to remove the bezel, I don't think. So let's have a go with the press. This is um, a, uh, let's see if I can show you, just pan up a minute. Uh, this is what, what's, what people refer to as the red press. I got this one from Cousins UK, but a lot of people, uh, you can get these on AliExpress and so on. Um, it's pretty chunky press, it's okay. It's not the best, but um, it'll do for a simple job like this. You can also, I'm sure, use a very cheap um, blue press, as they call it, the simpler one I used to have, which I broke a few times. Those uh, you can also probably get away with. It is quite a thin crystal in here, so it shouldn't require too much force to get it out. Now, under here, I've already got a smaller die. You just about see it. So let's see. Yeah, that should be okay. And I think that is about right. So let's just drop it down and see what, see what happens here. As I go nearer, I just want to make sure I'm not catching anything in there. Okay, something's coming off. Okay, something definitely moved there. It didn't make the usual sort of crack or pop. Apologies for the shaking camera. Let's get this nice and high so we can see what's happened. So this is the first time I'm removing one of these. Beautiful, All right? So we managed to get the, just the crystal out without the bezel there. Um, I've just remembered I'm actually changing the bezel, so perhaps I should have got, gone the other way, but maybe this will be easier. So let's have a look at that crystal on its own. Now it's taken the gasket with it. And as far as I know, you are supposed to use the gaskets that come with this new bezel for both the crystal and the uh, bezel itself. So we'll put that to one side with the gasket. So the gasket is removed from there. Let's also pull out the chapter ring. Is it stuck in there? No, it's not. It's just a bit, um, just a bit tight. So there's the standard chapter ring. Notice how it is quite sort of dished. It's not like as uh, straight up as the uh, SKX ones. It is quite slowly sloping. And also on the back of it, there is a couple of pins, which I guess are supposed to locate it. So it's aligned, but this one really isn't. Um, so either the case is wrong or this is wrong. Either way, for a relatively cheap watch, this does happen a lot. So I'm not too worried because I'm going to change this anyway. Now, let's have a look around because I will have to obviously want to remove this bezel. So to do that, I am gonna have a go with my typical bezel removal tool. Again, this is from HS, I think, so an Amazon set. And I will use this usually on um, my SKX and 5KX bezels, uh, the rotating bezel is quite easy on those. I've even sharpened it a bit. So let me have a closer look at this and I'll tell you if that is in fact the right way to do it. Okay guys, so this was surprisingly easy. Um, what you need to do, yes, use one of these tools. The usual place is around, uh, what was that? Maybe one, two o'clock. And I've literally found the little groove, pushed it just slightly and it just popped straight off. So now I know that I'll be able to free it with just a small twist there and it comes out dead easy. Now, one of the reasons that is, is because it is actually on a plastic gasket. Again, this one should also be kept um, with the standard part because I believe this nice fluted bezel also has a gasket already. Um, 
So yeah, let's move on. Let's try and get that fluted bezel on there, I think, first, and then we'll put the crystal in the watch at the end. So let's have a look at this fluted bezel because I have had a quick, quick peek at it before and it really impressed me. And actually, let's see if it comes with the extra gaskets as well. So there we go. Now I think for the money, that is a lovely finish. It's already sparkling, it's not even on anything yet. Look at that. Now let's have a zoom in. I think the gasket's a little twisted there. That should be okay. So this one comes with a set of gaskets already. There's one on the top. I might actually remove that for the moment. That's for the crystal. And there's one here as well. Now I've been told that we should be using the ones that come with the, uh, the, the bezel, or at least that's what Mark from Long Island Watch says, who also supplies these parts. Um, however, he doesn't have quite as many, as much of a set as this, I don't think. So the, Mo the Moki would be my choice anyway. And of course the links in the description uh, to, to these parts as well. So let's get this on to that watch. I cannot wait to see this. So I expect that this is all put in the right place for us already. So we should just be able to take the case and pop it on. So let's line it up. Let's see if it can do it by hand first of all. I think this might be something for the press. Yeah, we're gonna to have to press that, I think. So let me uh, put a case back on it. I'm gonna put a sacrificial case back because I don't wanna accidentally press the glass out of this one or damage it. So I'm gonna put just this plain case back and we'll go over to the press and I'll set it up. All right, guys, here we go. So I have put a slightly bigger top die on it, which is actually the one I typically use to press SKX and 5KX bezels as well. I'm expecting this to press on fairly easily. I'm just gonna have to try and hold it a bit steady as it's coming down. Let's see if I can get it to bite. Okay, so I pressed it down a bit Bit of my glove got stuck in, in between there somewhere. And it's almost there, just needs a bit of a, a push on this side. Um, but you can already see the outcome. Let's see if I can do that by hand. No, maybe not. I am quite scared of potentially bending this, but it seems like a strong part. So let's give it another push with the press. I think it'll do it. So bezel's on and it's looking good. Um, nice and straight, nice and flat all the way around now. And uh, all I needed to do was really just look at it from this kind of angle to see exactly what was happening. It's a little hard to get a die to fit well on here. So I'd actually go, went for a bigger die that pushes more on the very top edge. And um, yeah, I was able to get it flat. So yeah, just select your dies carefully if you're gonna do it this way. Um, I would definitely put the bezel in first before the crystal because I feel like uh, you will probably want quite a bit of pressure actually to get this in and I'd worry about damaging the crystal if it was already in there. So let's move on now to the crystal itself. So this is already in place. This is gonna be our crystal gasket. I'll have a quick look at it. Um, it's a bit hard to see through the camera. Let's see if I can spot it actually, I don't think so. There should be a little leading edge. I think it might be this side. You can see perhaps it's a bit dark here at the moment, but there is a little angled chamfer sort of on there. I will check it's the right way around and I'll just fit that gasket in to uh, the watch case just about here. Um, before I do that, I've just remembered is we need to put the chapter ring in, the nice new brushed steel chapter ring. We take that out. It is actually metal, this one. And has it got the little locating holes? Interestingly, it does. Okay, so that I guess stops it from jiggling around in there too much. So I'm just gonna drop this chapter ring 
uh, and they'll try and locate. I think they're the same, they're just at six and 12. I'm just having a look under here just to figure out where they go. Did I just get it in first time? No, I don't think so. Right, I'll, I think that, that might be close. So let me, let me press this in properly. Um, I'll put the gasket in and I'll show you how to get the crystal in as well. The chapter ring and gasket are in place now. Um, so I wanna keep it quite level, so I don't wanna pick it up too much. So here is the Namoki Mods um, Sapphire Crystal. Now this one should be a double dome and clear AR. I haven't actually opened this one yet. So let's have a look. Now when you're unpacking crystals like this, try your best not to touch the underneath of it. Uh, it just saves you a lot of effort cleaning it later. They usually come very clean. So you can see it does have a bit of a dome to it. Um, it'll look way better on the watch in a minute and no blue streaks or anything like that. So what we're essentially gonna do here is place the crystal on top of the watch. Let's move that a minute so it can get in a better position. We're gonna place this where it's gonna go, which is into that bezel, something like so. What you wanna be able to see is a bit of gasket all the way around. It's as simple as that really. Um, make sure it's nice and flat and then load it up into your press. So let's open this a bit higher. I did want to do this live guys, so apologies for the slightly shaky, shaky footage. Now you can also rotate the case through here uh, to get it into a good overall position. I'm using a smaller die at the top this time. Seems to be sitting there pretty well, so let's have a go. Oh, I can just about feel it start to touch there. And I'm gonna add a bit of pressure. Now you can be quite strong with sapphire crystals. Um, they are surprisingly strong. Uh, so you can go for a bit of a higher pressure, if even more so than you think. Um, they do take shock pretty well as well, actually. They can chip, the edges especially, and yes, they can scratch if you scratch it with a diamond or a diamond coated tool or something. But for day-to-day -day wear, it's definitely a very strong, strong material, even if it is quite thin on this one. So let's have a look, did that seat properly? I think on this right side, we need to go down a little bit more. So I'm gonna repress it. I'm gonna look at it properly this time and uh, try and get that down. Um, just so it's completely level, but already that is looking really, really cool. So there you go, guys. The crystal is in and is looking really, really nice. So now it looks gonna look better without this sacrificial uh, case back. I only really use this for, for pressing crystals in um, just in case uh, I, I didn't wanna scratch or damage the, the one that came with it, but that already looks pretty pretty cool. Um, so I can't wait to see it with the dial in it. Now for the dial, um, it's quite easy to pop back in. I'll show you how to do it in a second. Uh, you are going to want to make sure that this is completely free of any dust smudges, especially on the inside. But in order to see the inside well, we do need to clean the top. So what I typically do is brush, uh, well, sorry, polish the top with a standard polishing cloth as much as I can. But then I've also recently acquired probably one of my favorite tools, um, which is not here. Let me go grab it and I'll show you it in a second. This tool, now I got this one from Cousins. I think um, Bergeon make one as well and people probably get them uh, from various places, but it is a, a tool designed for cleaning glass and dials even, and even hands. I wouldn't really trust it on a dial or hands, really. It's not that useful for those, but for crystals, this is magic. Um, interestingly, it also ha seems to have some sort of gray, perhaps, um, uh, I don't know what that is, some sort of silica material, or maybe it's just foam in there. Either way, this doesn't seem to ever get dirty. So it lasts a long time. And once you've polished up your, your crystal um, with your regular cloth, 
you can go ahead and polish it with this and it just removes everything. It really removes smudges, especially any oils you might have got on there from your fingers or anything like that, uh, really, really well. Now, in theory, the underneath of this crystal should be okay because I've not touched it. Um, however, some loose particles could have got in there through the build so far, so it's better to use a little blower. I always like to do the top and quite a lot inside and then have a proper look at it. And if you see anything at all in there, then you're gonna to have to just repeat that process. But this one should be okay. It's gonna be a lot clearer with the dial in it and it's not too much of an effort to take it out. So let's go ahead and drop this on top of uh, the movement and dial set, which is here. So let's try and zoom in on this a little bit. I'm not really at the right angle here for the camera, um, but you'll get the process. So that this is sat on my casing cushion, um, which helps present it up a bit. Um, and all I'm gonna do is drop the case straight on the top and it should clip in um, because there is a bit of friction fit. Again, I've not touched the dial at all, so I'm just gonna give it a bit of a blow over in case it's picked something up that it shouldn't have. Final time for good luck. Okay, let's go. So when I drop it on, I'm just looking at the crown at four and it should slot in nicely like that. Okay, so next I should be able to just lift it up and the movement doesn't fall out. Now you can hold the back of the movement because it's just the rotor there. And let's have our first look. I just can't get, seem to get focus here. Let's try that again. There we go. Our first look at the Datejust style Seiko mod. Okay, now to put the crown back, let's find it, there it is. If you flip it over, the first thing you should do here as well is just check down where the crown tube would be. If, kind of hard to show you again, it's a little dark, apologies for that, but there is a little crown tube popping out through here if it's well inside the little space that, for it, because if it isn't, yeah, it can actually stop the rotor moving. Um, but that shouldn't be a problem here. So I'm going to pop the crown through. I can, I can wind it so it's all good. Maybe give final little clean and drop the case back on. Uh, and there you have it, guys. That's pretty much everything you need to do. The hard part's over there. I'm gonna just do it loosely in case I need to check, but let's put those hands in a better position for that dial. And that is looking really nice. Now, it's a shame that the case, uh, sorry, the gaskets that you get are black rather than white. However, I think you're always gonna have a bit of an edge there. But that's my first sort of thought is I would kind of wish that was just all silver. Um, but I definitely think the, the brushed part really sinks the dial into that watch and makes it stand out a bit more. Um, and you know, in the light, in the sunlight, we don't have much of it today, but in the sunlight, this is absolutely going to sparkle. So let me put it on that Jubilee bracelet next and we'll see what it looks like. So finally, guys, we've got the Namoki Mods Jubilee bracelet. This is already specifically designed for the SRPE Dress KX. Um, you can see mine's modified with the, the bezel and crystal already. Um, so let's go ahead and unpack this. Now, I believe uh, because the bracelet didn't come with any spring bars that we should use the existing ones that come with the watch. Um, so I'm gonna use my little crown tool, um, which is surprisingly helpful for many tasks, including getting these um, spring bars out. Nice thing that they have uh, drilled lugs so it's a lot easier to change straps but just be careful um, be quite gentle with those um, spring bars. Now unpacking the bracelet I'm just gonna get rid of all the stickers. This is a really nice bracelet uh, generally all the Namoki make bracelets are good um, they have a little signed crown as well pretty decent clasp this one is of course smaller 
I believe this is a 20 size. Um, I think um, lug width on, on the SRP Dress KX models, or sort of field, field watch style models, the 40 millimeter ones. So I've just got, I think all the stickers off. So let's try it on as it is, because I'm quite curious. I've, I've got a big wrist anyway. I'm not sure this watch would actually suit me all that well. Um, but I'm curious to see how it looks. So this is gonna go up on the bottom. So I'm just gonna drop that in there. You can usually just do this by hand. I might need to get a bit closer to see it. No, it should be all right. There we go. Oh, that's quite a solid fit. I'm surprised by that. They definitely did a good job there. And look, it's already looking awesome. Let's try the other side. I think this is going to be quite a long bracelet. So let's go grab that in. Oh. I'm going to struggle with my gloves here. So let me take them off. Let me stick it on properly and I'll show you the result. So there you go, guys. It is finally on that Jubilee bracelet and it looks stunning. I really like this in, in person. Um, it you, you would almost have have someone fooled uh, that it is actually a date just until they spot the crown at four, and of course the Seiko style hands. Um, but a really cool mod, and it's one of those where you where you really feel like this could could have been a real Seiko. And those are sometimes the best mods where you're changing just a few simple things. Didn't play with the hands or the dial. I just changed the chapter ring bezel and crystal here and of course the bracelet i mean the bracelet alone would have transformed this watch to be honest but i really wanted to try out that fluted bezel um i think we're on to a winner here guys what do you think let me know in the comments of course now this bracelet um is surprisingly long so i've got big seven and three quarter inch wrists so this watch will likely look quite small on me um, but let's give it a go. Now the bracelet is still a little too big. I think I could take one, maybe even two links out, relatively small links out there. You know what? Actually, it looks all right. It reminds me of my OP39 Rolex and that kind of size, but with the fluted bezel, I think this dial uh, crystal is slightly smaller perhaps, but I think I could rock this. Um, it's a bit loose still, but perhaps that's what I would want for a watch like this, quite casual um, dress watch, style with the blue face as well. But let me uh, size it properly and get some good shots outside. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video, guys, and I'll leave you with those shots in the sunlight right here. And uh, of course, if you like what I'm doing here, please do follow me on uh, YouTube, subscribe to my channel, uh, follow me on Instagram as well, at Seiko Mods Dubai, where you'll be able to find this mod and many others, all other mods I've done in the past. And if you want to order one from me, um, you can do. And of course, if you're planning a mod like this yourself, and you want to ask anything, drop me a message or comment below. Um, thanks, guys. I uh, really enjoyed this model. And uh, I think I'm this is not definitely not the last one of these I'm going to be making. Um, so hope you enjoyed seeing it as much as I enjoyed building it. Thanks again. I'll see you soon.